Hello Watch Enthusiasts and welcome to Watch Chronicler. In this industry we're often sold the idea that innovation is how complicated or thin a watch movement can be. Perhaps it's even the fine decoration which we see on high horology pieces. However I'm willing to wager you haven't heard the humble Vajru 7750 chronograph being praised as a masterpiece of engineering and innovation, but permit me to convince you otherwise. Before I begin though, like, share and subscribe to catch all the latest here on the YouTube channel. Our podcast is now live on Spotify as well as on SoundCloud, and will soon be live on iTunes too. Take a look at our Instagram page where we present regular photos and previews, and of course take a look at watchchronicler.com for full articles and features, many of which are only available in written form. We live in an age of Instagram watch appreciation. In this world, photos are often accepted more readily than facts and figures, yet are taken out of context. What I mean by this is that whilst we can praise a watch for being the thinnest of its kind, the most ornate or having the most complications, we rarely reward good engineering. Yet by this measure, in a world where a lot of movements have some quite fundamental design flaws, the Veljuri 7750 is a perfect example. Whilst we praise the movements used in icons such as the Omega Speedmaster, Rolex Daytona or Zenith El Primero, the vast majority of mechanical chronographs in this industry use the Veljuri 7750. The reason for this is that it's robust, highly modifiable and thus perfectly suited to watches which simply need to work. It's an under-discussed fact that the in-house chronographs of some of the most illustrious brands producing the slimmest of movements have movement return percentages well into the double figures in the first year. By contrast, a Veljuri 7750 failure is almost always down to misuse or watchmaker error, but rarely due to an inherent design problem. The origins of the humble Veljuri 7750 are rooted in a time of mechanical upheaval, as has been repeated almost ad nauseum, 1969 was a year of great change to chronographs. First with the Seiko 6139, chronographs were gaining automatic winding, and by the end of the year the major Swiss brand Zenith had the first Swiss integrated automatic chronograph. As a manufacturer of chronograph movements for Swiss brands such as Rolex with the 72 and 7733 movements, Veljus saw a need to pursue the automatic trend. They looked to Edmond Kept, a man who directed the movement, as a Swiss alternative to Seiko's thought process. This was to be no finely tuned high beat movement like the El Primero, but positively agricultural by comparison, although it still needed to have a quick set day date function. Most importantly though, it needed to be mass produced. However, above all, the movement needed to be developed quickly, and for this reason two shortcuts were taken. The first was the use of computer technology. This made the Veljuri 7750 one of the first computer designed movements. Also, the existing Veljuri 7733 was used as a base for the movement, thus enabling the timekeeping functions to be left largely alone. What was most innovative about the Veljuri 7750 was the way in which this seemingly impossible pairing of reliability, ease of manufacturing and functionality was achieved. First, the chronograph used no column wheel, but instead used a particularly efficient set of levers to rotate a cam for engaging, disengaging and resetting the chronograph. This was much easier to manufacture too, as a result of being punched out of metal. Likewise, the automatic winding system is a perfect example of more not necessarily being better. Rather than using a bi-directional winding system with the notoriously unreliable reverser gears seen on the ETA2824 style of movement, this system only winds in one direction. Whilst this may seem like a compromise, this system actually allows faster winding with all but the most vigorous motion. The reason for this is that when the reverser gears in an automatic winding system change the direction of winding, they often use 15 degrees of rotor motion before beginning to wind in order to engage. As a consequence, and particularly after the lubricants are no longer fresh, the motion of a wrist at a desk, for example, is not always sufficient to get out of this dead zone of rotor movement. By contrast, the winding system in the Veljuri is always engaged and so it's this kind of care which makes the Veljuri 7750 so effective. However, just as this movement entered the world, its tenure was almost cut short as the demand for Swiss mechanical watches collapsed in the mid-70s. As a consequence, production halted in 1975, and so was rendered something of the past. In spite of this, in much the same way as with the Zenith El Primero, the Veljuri 7750's plans were kept by its creator, Mr. Kept. And so once this crisis in the Swiss watch industry had passed, Veljuri was able to recommence production of the movement after being merged with the movement manufacturer ETA. The result was a movement with a now increased beat rate of 4 Hz, and the opportunity to be modified for many different projects across the industry. Many variations of the movement were created from IWC's 1985 perpetual calendar chronograph by Kurt Klaus to Zinn's recent 910 SRS column wheel flyback chronograph. 
However, the man who truly demonstrated the potential of this movement was Richard Habring. Working for IWC, this man simplified the rattrapante chronograph for use in watches far below the usual level of price required for this complication. Where such a complicated function usually required the presence of a second column wheel to control the additional second hand, this movement used a cam-operated pair of jaws which would clamp together and halt the other hand at the press of a button before sending it shooting back into position. In this way, a more simple system, far from being crude, revealed reliability and durability which would have been totally impossible to achieve with a high horology setup. The result was a movement changed from something fiercely complicated and very, very exclusive, which could only be worked on by particularly skilled watchmakers, into something far, far more simple and more elegant in that respect. Habring didn't stop there, as he then founded his own brand with his wife Maria under their surname to create a range of watches based upon this movement. Today they operate in Austria and produce only a few hundred watches per year. From their most rudimentary watch, the Felix, to the Irwin with jumping seconds, their own minute repeater, and a perpetual calendar moon phase chronograph with split seconds and a mono pusher, all of their watches have a base in the remarkable architecture which is the Velger 7750. Of course, the Velger 7750 is not a refined movement in terms of being particularly slim or anything of that nature. It is quite a thick movement as a result of its automatic winding system. However, it does offer us an awful lot for a base movement, in terms of having the day and the date, hacking seconds, manual winding, a quick set date, and of course the chronograph. All of these features you wouldn't expect on a basic movement, if you were looking at a three-hand watch, for example. Here you wouldn't be able to take hacking seconds for granted, nor manual winding on an automatic watch. So it does show just how much we expect from a chronograph movement, because of what this movement has offered us. To add to a spectacular CV, the Venger 7750 has also been developed by Longines into the L688, a column wheel chronograph with a vertical clutch. Through this movement, Longines and the Swatch Group as a whole is able to even cater to the desires of today's industry, with a movement which feels as fresh today as it did in the 70s. Whilst Omega moves away from this movement with their bespoke coaxial 9000 series caliber made specifically by ETA, the Venger 7750 took the coaxial escapement very successfully to create the 3300 caliber. By comparison, the ETA2892 required four series from A to D as its in-house counterpart, the 2500, before Omega was able to iron out persistent issues. The point is, whilst we can be easily impressed by a brand offering a new complication or movement, a large portion of those movements are simply not up to the job of being reliable and durable in the long term, let alone being asked to perform well with very few years of widespread testing. The Venger 7750 is not a particularly refined movement. But just as it wasn't the superbike which changed the motorcycle industry but the Honda Super Cub, this movement has changed the way movements are designed. Curiously, the automatic conversion of this chronograph was so successful that it's now being used without the chronograph function at all in the form of the ETA Velgrange movements, which are larger three-hand and GMT movements, as well as a chronograph version for larger watches. Due to a need for higher torque to move longer hands, the Velger 7750's founding principles were used, in this way, the movement has been tested far beyond its original design brief. However you look at it, this movement has fundamentally changed the industry which we love, and has given the opportunity to enjoy complications which would normally be out of the reach of most. For this reason, I regard it as a marvel of engineering, and a movement of more greatness than many of the high horology movements which amaze us with complexity and finishing. And with that, I'll conclude this video there, but I'd be fascinated to hear what you have to say in the comments down below about this movement, and indeed whether you think I'm right, because I'm always interested in discussion and debate. So thank you very much for watching, this is Armon from WatchChronicle.com, out.